Right, yeah. Today, guys, we're looking at measuring our own physical activity. Uh, we're going to look at different ways of doing it and the advantages and disadvantages of both of those. Right, uh, so the first thing we need to look at is a couple of key terms, and there's reactivity, social desirability bias, and then the range of subjective and objective measures. Now, first of all, reactivity. Reactivity is a bit of bias that occurs when people modify their behaviour during the period of measurement. Now, if people are aware that they're being measured, they may increase their physical activity, okay, because they may want to impress uh, whoever is recording them, or they could decrease their physical activity and they might be embarrassed. Uh, there is ways of decreasing reactivity, see if you can think of some. Our next one that we're going to look at is our social desirability bias. Now, this refers to when people report results which are altered in some way to appear more socially desirable. Now, for example, if I gave you a survey or something to do, uh, he, uh, a boy might do say he does more exercise than he really does to impress his peers or to be more socially accepted. Uh, they do not actually change the actual amount of physical activity that they do, like in reactivity, but basically they just lie about it. Right, uh, now we need to start looking at the measures of physical activity that we can use. All right, and the first section we're going to talk about is subjective measures. Now these rely on people's opinions or perceptions, so they're subjective, uh, and that in, can include things like recall surveys or keeping a log or a diary. So let's have a look at these individually now. Uh, first of all, uh, with a recall survey, subjective measure number one. So. A recall survey can be a self-administered survey for the last week or the last month. Okay, so you write down everything that you did um, in the week or the month beforehand. So you're not doing it as you go, you're doing it all at the end. Now, this poses a bit of a problem for a, a child or a elderly, so a child anything under 12. Um, in that they can't actually recall it for themselves due to cognitive limitations. But there are some advantages to it. There's no reactivity because you don't know you're going to be measured until you do the survey. Uh, it assesses frequency, intensity, type and duration, which we've looked at previously. And it's quick, easy and it's cheap. Now, some of the disadvantages though is it can be not accurate like we talked about a social desirability bias and also it's not suitable for children under 10 or the elderly due to cognitive limitations, so their, their memory, etc. Uh, the second lot of subjective measures, measures we look at is the log or a diary, which are basically the same thing. Now, this is, involves reporting daily into a diary or a log, and it measures, you can measure all the dimensions if you do it properly, so you can measure frequency, intensity, type, and duration. Again, you may need a proxy report for a child or elderly. Uh, it's good for small groups, and it's easy, be easy to complete, but the same thing again, can be not accurate due to social desirability bias, and not suitable for children or the elderly. Now, it takes a longer time to do it than a recall survey because you're doing it as you go rather than one big hit at the end. All right, now let's look at some objective measures. All right, so these are measured by an object. All right, so remember the O. O is for objective. And there's three things uh, very main objective measures, direct observation, pedometry, and accelerometry. Now, our first one, direct observation. Okay, now this, this is a ob uh, an objective measure, okay, because it's completed using a template where you watch a participant and you mark down how much physical activity they're doing. Okay, so the template is the object, just remember ob for objective observation. It's commonly used for schools and you know groups of children because it's quick, easy at, for small uh, to medium groups and it also records your context like your, uh, what type of activity that you're doing. 
Uh, the disadvantages are it's difficult with large, group, large groups to watch to keep uh, watch of everyone. It's time and very labour intensive. It's obtrusive because you're looking at observing a person all the time, and it's got high reactivity. Uh, for example, uh, if someone was watching you do something, maybe you might do more or less activity than you normally would. Alright, a second objective measure. Uh, we're going to look at pedometry. So pedometers you've probably seen before. It's a small device worn on the hip and it counts your steps. All right? Now 10,000 steps is the general recommended amount. Okay, we won't have a go at this at some stage. It's cheap, it's small, they can come in cereal packets sometimes. Uh, they're easy for large groups, it measures walking and can be used in a range of settings. However, it doesn't record any your frequency, your intensity, your type, or your duration, and it misses a lot of the context of what your physical activity is actually doing. So it does, you don't get a lot of information out of it. It's just one figure. Right, our last objective measure which we'll look at is an accelerometer, and it, this is a bit of a more high-tech uh, piece of equipment, uh, and it's worn by the participant and it records all your body motion over a certain amount of time. Okay, so what, however you move over the time where it's being measured, it will measure all of it. So you can get info, it'll come out on a little graph on frequency, intensity, and duration, and it's small and it's simple and it's quick data. However, we cannot generally do it as a school because it is very, very expensive uh, and it's not good for large groups, but it does, uh, doesn't provide contextual info like what you're at, what physical activity you're actually doing and it requires professional training to actually be able to you know, administer it and to interpret the results. Okay, so let's look at what, what we want to do, subjective or objective, which one's, which one's better, which one's worse. Um, they're good for different things. Uh, objective measures are generally more accurate and reliable as they use machines or by impartial uh, people, whereas subjective measures are less accurate as they rely on people's opinions and more subject to social desirability bias. So, yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Righto, so thanks for uh, watching and listening. So remember the O is for objective. Okay, so object. Okay, it's time to do some questions. Alright, this has been a Saunders production. Thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.